there. Welcome. Great to have you join us once again. What a challenge we had last week. We have started on effective prayer. And Jen, we are going somewhere, aren't we, together? I love this subject because it's one that touches every single one of us. If we want to move forward in our relationship with God, we have to understand what Jesus said concerning prayer. Not what religion has taught us, not what tradition has taught us, not even the opinions of people or our own preconceived ideas. When we understand what the Word of God teaches us about prayer, we will realize how easy, how simple, how exciting, and how rev it will revolutionize everything about our lives when we know how to pray the way God wants us to pray. You know, as we started this journey of many weeks ago, we started it with the basic foundational doctrines in what we're talking about. We've gone through some of them, and now we're spending just a few weeks right here on Effective Prayer. I want you to grab your Bibles, your notebooks, your pens. I want you to study with us over these next 25 odd minutes that's got left of this program. And I want you to get ready for what God's going to do in your life. If you know your prayer life is not what it should be and you want to change it, if you want to grow it, if you want to move to a new level in your prayer life, get into the Word with us. Mm. So come, I invite you, come be a part of this journey with us right here on Faith Matters as we get into effective prayer. Now, Jen, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I know that God has so much in store for us. Yep. As we get into the subject, or should I say, continue the subject yes. on effective prayer. That's right. And we, we started with the subject of understanding what is prayer? What is prayer? And and we understood that prayer has everything to do with our communication with God. Yeah. It's been a communication and you, you stressed how important it is for us to not speak in a, a voice or a tone or even in words that are really not our own normal natural words. You know, God made you, He formed you, He's been at every, every part of your life, He's seen it, He's, he's been involved with it. For goodness sake, he knows who you are. You don't that's have right, to try and impress right. him or, or try and act like someone you aren't. So just be yourself, be natural, and always expect him to have his ears wide open to hear you. He is a father who loves you. He sees you as he sees his son, as the righteousness of God in Christ mm. Jesus. So because of that, he said, you call upon me and I will answer you. You call to me, you seek me and you will find me. And we have to understand that from the get go, before we even open our mouths to speak to him, we have a confidence inside of us knowing that he loves us and he wants us to know that he is listening to our prayers and he, ex he expects us to expect him to answer us. And so that's the first thing we wanted to place inside of you that there is inside of you an absolute confidence that your God loves you and he wants to hear you so we need to speak and communicate with him and we spoke about how important it is to actually devote ourselves to prayer as yes. well you know the early church um, they learned about the only way you're going to see the power of God actually operate and manifest and work in our lives is based on if we are willing and devoted to actually pray and spend time in God's presence. And listen to what it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It says, And they steadfastly, listen to this word, persevered, devoting themselves constantly to the instruction and fellowship of the apostles, to the breaking of bread, including the Lord's uh, Supper, and Prayers. Three things that kept the power of God working on the inside of them was a persistence and not giving up, but to continuously, number one, was they fellowshiped with like-minded people, people, the apostles, people that were as spiritually mature to encourage them and keep them in check. Right. And number two, they always remembered the Lord's Supper, which Jesus told us to do, to remember what He did for us on the cross. But number three, their prayer lives. They were devoted to praying. And I don't mean um, getting into spiritual prayers that you think you just can't do or that's too much of you. No, 
the word says we pray ceaselessly without ceasing in other words communicating with god sure. the way his word teaches us to do that jane you know as we look at the scripture there's so many different kinds of prayer correct and 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 there's 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 prayer of worship intercession tongues there's prayers of agreement i mean you could go into category after category of a type or mm -hmm. should i say an example of prayer from the word of god there's the prayer of binding and loosing there's the prayer of commitment there's the prayer of consecration there's there's many different types but there's also the prayer of petition or i like to say the prayer of faith yes all right and to me, I, I want us to spend a few minutes and we, we, we need to talk on that because mm -hmm. the prayer of faith or this prayer of petition is, is very important because it's, it's the prayer which is to ask God for things we need and desire according to His Word. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when we pray the prayer of faith, now I, I want to make this very clear to you and, and let me quickly recap here for a moment. There are many types of prayer, mm -hmm. okay? Many, you can pray in tongues, you can pray in agreement, you can intercede, you can pray in worship. The, consecration. Uh, uh, consecrate, a lot of different types. But there's something called the prayer of, of faith. faith. Yes. All right? Or you, the, the, people might speak of it as the prayer of pet, petition. It is the prayer of faith. Now, here's the thing. When you pray the prayer of faith according to the word of God whatever things you ask for whatever things you desire you do it according to his word that's good that's where I put my faith mm. I put my faith in prayer mm. according to the scripture mm. that's why I love the prayer of faith mm. because it's not it, based on you it's not based on what I want it's based on what the word of God says so the word of God says that, yes, he looks after the sparrows and he looks after the birds. Therefore, he's going to look after me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't mm -hmm. say, Lord, please look after me. No, I pray the prayer of faith. According to according your According to word. the scripture that yes. says you, it's your duty to look after me. It's your promise That's to what me. you've said, correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you've promised it, it's your duty. It's, yes. it's who you are. That's what you are going to do. Yes. And when you pray that type of prayer, everything changes. Because I've based it in the Word. That's good. According to the Word of God. Amen. And that's what I want to look, look at. Because Mark 11, 24. And if you're writing scriptures, you'll see the scriptures come on the screen. And I want you to, I want you to take the notes. Because Mark 11, 24 says, Therefore, I say unto you, what, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Mark 11, 24. When you pray, whatever you desire, according yep. to the word, yep. when you pray, believe them and you will have them. Yes. That's powerful, isn't that it? That is so powerful. It's all about his word and mm. his will. And you know, many people have said, that's a bit, that's a bit cheeky. You know, yeah. how can you demand things of God? Who do you think you are? Well, we are exactly what his word says we are. We are his children and he's made it very, very clear that in order for us to receive anything and everything that he has promised, we have to pray according to his word, believe in his word. So it's no, ev well, it's never a case of saying, well, God, I know Jesus that you died on the cross for my for my sins. I also know that by your word says by your stripes I am healed. Yeah. I know that you say you are the Lord my God my healer. I know there are script there's scripture after scripture speaking about how healing is from you and sickness is from the devil. So I understand your word says that your will is for me to be healed. So when it comes to my issue uh, or, or if, when it comes to my physical body and I'm battling in a sickness or with a sickness, um, then I'm, I'm coming to him and I say, God, if it's your will, if you don't mind, if you have a, an inkling of love towards me, if this is what you want for me, mm. then will you heal me? Well, then you just contradicted everything because you haven't prayed according to his will. His yeah, will doesn't yeah. say, it may or may not be my will to heal you. No, nowhere in the word does it say that. 
it always says that it's his will so when we pray he's saying come to me accord and pray according to my will according to my word and believe it with your That's whole right. heart your whole heart come committed that this word is my will and you will pray according to that it doesn't say you it's not a cheekiness it's not a disrespect it's it's coming in line with what he expects us to do so understand your attitude is not demanding like a like a rebellious teenager or like someone that just says well god this is what you said so you owe it to me that is not it at all that's not what this is when we pray by faith we come with a humble heart a heart that is full of thanksgiving a heart that is so grateful for what jesus has done for us that so grateful that god's will is only for our good so we come with the right attitude of heart a humble heart but we come believing that's, right. that's what we're talking about we come believing god because your word has promised it because i know your word is your will we come believing your will nothing else so it's not if it's your will we know your will and so we pray according to your will believing with our whole heart that this is what you want for us and we ask in line with that Jen, you know, Jeremiah, in 1 Jeremiah 12, the latter part of that scripture, a very interesting scripture. Uh, God, it's, it, it speaks, let me read it to you. It says, For I, the Lord, am watching over my word to perform it. Mm. In other words, it puts God into a position of what His will is. You've already spoken it. So what is God doing? God is watching over his word to perform it he's bringing your word in line with his word yeah to perform it mm. that's the beauty of faith right that's what it is all i'm doing is i'm aligning what i'm praying my words with god's words when those two collide or align if i can say it that way they come together when they come together god says Oh, yes, I said it, Andre said it, I'm going to do it. Ex exactly right. And that's he'll how only, it He'll only honor his word. He's, and, he's honoring it. And really what we're doing is answering the second yeah. question. Yeah. Where it says, once I have prayed, once I have prayed, um, when do I then believe that I receive the answer? Do I only believe when I start seeing things change? You know, do I just put it out there? But no, according to what the scriptures that we've told you, it says, when you pray, believe. believe. Correct. So it's not afterwards, it's, it's when it's I the miracle, pray. The miracle takes place at the point of your belief. Prayer. Your, yes. The prayer. Yeah. Where you believe. I've used the dome as an example. I, I can give you many examples. But when God spoke to us about the dome, we knew it was His word for us to build the dome and complete the dome and he gave us the building but then the word was completed already in 1999 yeah when he gave it now we in 2020 mm -hmm. 21 years later we seen the fulfillment of yeah, it yeah absolutely okay so it took 21 years from the time of believing which is where it was done yes to manifesting for completion in the, in the natural. Yes. I'm not talking here about the sp spiritual side. I'm talking about a manifestation in the natural. Yeah. Understand, when you pray and you believe, it is done. Yes. You have to continually be at that point yes. of victory yes. in your life and see it be manifest in your life. Amen. So on the day, Psalm 138.3 says, On the day I called, you answered me. I love that. On the yes. day you called, you on the day I called, you answer me. So when we pray, we must we must ask in faith. We need to be single-minded wow, about so God's willingness and his ability to answer our prayers. Mm. Don't come to God and think, oh, he's not gonna answer. No. God will answer. He'll honor his he word. He will honor the word. He says the he watches point over of the word. What you believe. Yes. And that's where he's watching. Yes, yes, yes. So that's 
That's something Love that it. we need to look fact, and understand. James 1, uh, verse 5 to 8 also, it says here, but if any of you lacks wisdom, mm. let him ask of God who gives to all men generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting. That's right. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man expect, don't even expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. Being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now, many people say, oh, but that's just for wisdom. No, no, no. It says you cannot expect to receive anything you ask. You will not receive a thing if you come with, if it's your will, or if there's doubt involved. You know, we've been taught in, in some churches, they teach that by saying, if it's your will means you've been humble. Yeah. Like, like it's a righteous thing. That is not righteous. That is not according to the word of God at all. Never does that happen. Yes, Jesus did once. Once he prayed, Lord, if it's your will, take this cup from me. But that wasn't a prayer of petition. That wasn't the prayer of faith. Mm. He wasn't praying for anything to happen or change. He was consecrating himself. He knew the will of God was for him to do it. He was consecrating himself and saying, God, you know, I know this is what your will is. I understand. But if there's any way that if there's any other way we can handle this, yeah. you know, then show me and, and I'll do it. But he knew he wasn't going to pray that he didn't go. He knew that this had to happen. Yeah. He wasn't praying specifically for uh, a miracle. He wasn't praying specifically for something he was believing in or, or a promise that God's word had for him. Do you understand? When it comes to the prayer of faith, it is a prayer that you have to be single minded on. Understanding this is God's will for me. This is his promise towards me. I believe it with all of my heart. I refuse to doubt. I refuse to question. This is his will. And so I can stand on the authority of this word and this promise. And I can believe for it with my whole heart, knowing it will be done. James, in the book of James says, if that's how you pray, you can expect it to happen. He will not hold it back from you because he will always honor his word when you believe it with your whole heart but if there is an inkling of doubt and you wavering on whether it is his will or whether it isn't his will then don't even expect to receive it jen it's about believing continually not doubting past the midnight hour wow that's good. it's it's about going a little bit further than where the average person would go yeah all right the average person normally quit mm -hmm. they normally give up that's why they don't see the manifestation you have to push past that mm -hmm. you have to push past into a completeness of what god wants to do in your life and you have to push past the, the midnight, midnight hour. hour because we kind of tend to yeah. um, limit god i mean if you look yeah. at what what would have happened to daniel yeah in the lion's den i mean if <laughs> Daniel, it was only he only saw the deliverance once he was in the den, in with the lions. Mm. But if he had given up trusting God, if he had given up um, before that, uh, oh my goodness, then he would have. I mean, he would have been killed. Yeah, Ma imagine if he had given up before he went into the den. Yeah, because the den speaks of devastation. But it was his deliverance. Yes. <laughs> so that, that's the point. You see, you look at your circumstances right now. You look at the, the place where you are and you see it as there's no way out of the situation. No, no. Understand it's in the midst of that thing when you pray and when you get the word of God on it and you begin to believe it, you believe through the midnight hour. Yeah. Wow. You believe past that point yeah. of, of the end for whatever circumstance. You know, I've seen this so many times. People will write to us and people will come in and say, oh, I need a, I need a miracle. I need a financial breakthrough by this date or they're handing yes, me over yes. or by this thing. And, and, and yes. uh, doctors have said this date or whatever. And, and, mm -hmm. and we give a date to it and we say that's the midnight hour. Yeah. Uh, I look when we were purchasing uh, the, the Faith Dome and that whole area, Jen, and, and we wanted, we had a deadline date that we had to come up with the money and, and we had to get to that deadline date. But 
But God had already seen the, the, the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had, he had already seen the result. Mm -hmm. What we needed to do was not quit. Mm -hmm. What we needed to do was continue to believe all the way through to see it come to yeah, pass. That's right. You've got to push through. Mm -hmm. Because you, you don't tell God by when He has to answer your prayer. Yeah. That's the problem. The problem is you and I sit there and say, Lord, you know, and the doctors say, yeah. I've got to have it answered by then or I will die. Mm. Or you'll say, uh, you know, a breakthrough has my to breakthrough be now. financially has to be by this date or, you know, they're going to hand me over or something. You, you can't tell God when the deadline is. He knows God already everything. knows. Yeah. All right. He knows how to answer your prayer. What you've got to do is say, Lord, I will trust you no matter what to the sure. end. I love that. that that's where we've got to go. We've got to keep our faith in God's power and God's wisdom. You can't do this in the natural. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the problem. We're trying in our natural brain to, to understand something supernatural. You can't do that. You've got to get to a place where the supernatural takes over your natural. And you've got to come to that point where it's only God's power, God's wisdom speaking through you. Every time, every time there's a situation, every time. And Jen, I miss it many times. But I thank the Lord I hit it other times. I thank the Lord that there's times I'm on point with hearing His wisdom and hearing His voice and getting His, His word uh, for a situation and, and guarding it and, 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 and making that decision according to His word. But there's other times where I, I do miss it and those I regret. But when you come to that point, of truly understanding, keeping the faith of God, His power and His wisdom working in you. You know what? Everything changes mm -hmm. in your life and it moves you to another level. And I think because we, we've got to decide to not put our tra trust and our faith in the circumstances. Mm. Really, that, that's not what it's about. You've got to actually take your eyes off of that circumstance and think only when that circumstance changes, that's when, you know, when when I'll, I'll stop praying. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's not like that. What, what do we put our faith in? We put our faith in God, knowing that He is true to His word mm. and that in His good time, when He sees it's ready to happen, it It'll will happen. happen. It That's will. Right. You don't give up. Right. And you know, it's uh, when we had with our child as well, um, with um, believing for for a baby, we, we could not. I mean, the doctor said we couldn't and you know, just there were so many things. And and I remember it didn't even matter after the miscarriages. It didn't, you know, you get to the place where you say, God, when you are ready, when that word, when your word goes to work inside of me and produces your promises, that's, right. that's awesome. I'm not going to give you a deadline. I'm not going to give you the time frame. I just know that while I am alive, <laughs> while I am believing in you and mm. trusting in you, you are going to have your work, your word go to work in my That's life. Right. And the promise that you've given me for children, it's going to become a reality. But I'm not putting a time frame on you. Here I am. I trust you. I believe you. I know that my womb is blessed and we will have a child. And, and I, I will believe it with all of my heart. So where does our trust come into? Not a time frame. No, our trust comes into God who is able and willing to do everything that His Word has promised when we choose to believe and put our trust in Him, not the circumstances or a time frame. Isaiah 55 verse 9, and I'm going to close with this. God's ways are not our ways. Uh -huh. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He sees everything. He sees, he knows far beyond our limited understanding. Mm. Think about that. God has a plan for you. Dear Pastor Andre and Jenny, you guys are doing great things around the world through this ministry. I am particularly blessed by your relationship as husband and wife. Lastly, your new book on Living For is really inspiring. I look forward to having a copy in my library. Thank you and God bless. Hi, Pastor. I thank God for the educational show. You are really a blessing to us. We are learning a lot. May the Lord continue to bless you. Your program is very helpful and life-changing. Thank you. 
and God bless you. Wow, Jen, what a time we've had in the Word of the Lord again. I, I, I just love these times. I hope you're growing. I yes. trust you're growing. I believe that you're growing. Amen. All right, and that you're stepping into everything God has for you. Get the Word. We're talking here about prayer. It's been a great journey so far. We're going on. We, we're going further into it next week again. Understanding effective prayer. But I want you to write to us. I want you to please get an email to us, fm at myfaithtv.com, fm at myfaithtv.com. Send us that email and yep. tell us how the series has blessed you, what you're growing in. If you've got any questions, please ask them whatever you've got pertaining to it. And remember last week we, we gave that challenge and I want to echo that challenge again uh, to each and every one of you. Begin to be an effective prayer warrior. In other words, make every time you pray effective. Mm, get his word. Get his word on it. Pray effectively and start by practicing when you, when you pray over your meal. Start by practicing when you have a quick one minute or two minute prayer somewhere. Let's be effective, men and women of God. Take up the challenge and say, I'm going to become an effective prayer warrior in my life. And I'm going to believe mm -hmm. when I pray, it is done, done in Jesus' Amen. name. So, so get us those emails, write to us. We want to hear from you, okay? And remember as well, every single day we send out a daily devotion. We would love to get that devotion to you. If you would like to receive it, please send us just in the subject line of the email, just write daily devotion, please. That's all you have to say. If you're not yet receiving our daily devotion, Jen and I every day send out a devotion By to email. you. All right, send it to fm at myfaithtv.com. We send it to you on email. We send it on Facebook. Follow our Facebook page at myfaith.tv. Mm -hmm. If you haven't yet liked us, follow the Facebook page, myfaith.tv. We want to hear from you and, and we want to be able to we want to be able to bless you each and every day with the word of God Amen. as it goes forth each and every day. You're gonna grow, that's why faith matters. We love you. Thank you for being with us. And remember we'll see you next week once again and we're going on with the subject effective, effective prayer. prayer. It's gonna be good. You don't want to miss. God bless from our Faith Matters studio. We'll see you next week. Shalom. Shalom.